Hey, greetings YouTube, Performance Reviews here. Um, and I have another repair video for you before we get started. Go ahead and turn all notifications on, hit that bell. Uh, subscriptions, I guess, don't mean a whole lot on YouTube these days. So what I have here is a pair of Eureka commercials. And the bags have been washed and we'll talk about them and show them a little later. But the, these machines were sold in the mid-2000s mostly at Sam's Club. Some of them were, you would see at like Office Depot, Staples, that sort of place. But uh, mostly uh, Sam's Club is where you'd see these machines. Um, and there's two variants. This one is newer. And I can tell you that by the cord color. And I rotate them up. The pedal color. The beige went to this gray uh, some point when Eureka Electrolux kind of fell apart and dissolved. Um, they're, they're pretty good machines. They're not great. Um, you know, there's some differences between these and the Sanitaires. Um, but these were a Sanitaire for less money, basically. And they, these were really a great value. Um, let's see if I can tell you the date on the first one. This is a model, by the way, uh, 2094 uh, was the model. Um, well... Usually where the date code would be stamped on the base would be under here. And you can see this one was Fuji and used for wet pickup. Uh, and people wonder why I wear gloves. Oh, that is nasty. Yeah. If you didn't know, this is not a carpet cleaner. This has like fibrous Kirby cake. You know what this reminds me of? This is like asbestos or something. <laughs> oh, this is nasty. And I wish I had a paint scraper handy. I do, however, have a piece of steel, so we're gonna use it. Uh, I used to have a paint scraper that was uh, I ground perfectly to the size of this, which is like point like eight one inches, I want to say something like that. It was some weird measurement. Anyways. So yeah, that's gonna need to be washed. Um, we also have some sort of egg here, or egg sac of some sort of creature right there. All that's going in the trash. These have been sitting in my shop for months. Uh, before the pandemic, a friend dropped them by and he's like, I want to fix these and give these up to a friend of mine. Uh, they shouldn't need a lot of money. Um, actually, I think one's going to his collection, one's going to his friend. Uh, but you get the point. So they're just been sitting here and he texted me yesterday and was like, you know, I kind of need those machines. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, and you said no rush on them. So, there we go. All right, well, this one I can see the take code, and it's a 2011. There's the date code on this machine. Um, and one thing I like to do is I like to shake the bearing. This one's gonna have a newer motor. This is a Chinese-made machine. Uh, and this one here is a uh, probably Mexican-made machine, if I had to guess. Let's take a look. Uh, Sembo de Mexico? Hancho de Mexico? Uh, Hancho de Mexico. They're both Mexican machines. That's, uh, curious. Well, let's, uh, pop the rest of them apart real quick here. I need some something to put the screws on. They both have the newer style fan, which is great. Of course, the fan could have been replaced. I mean, these are commercial. These are essentially meant to be uh, trash, like you see them. These are meant to be commercial beater vacuums. And we have a Torx and a dial nap.
seeing everything in stereo here and hearing everything in stereo. All right, that's got a, uh, oh, this is excellent. All right. So we see the older style Mexican motor. Now, like I said, I've seen that these are outlasting the Chinese motor, even though this newer style motor was meant to last double the hour life. Originally, this was a thousand hour life motor. This is supposed to be a 2000 hour life. And actually what we were seeing was that this motor would last two, three, sometimes 4,000 hours. These, these would just last and you can actually replace the bearings and carbon brushes and they actually, uh, we'll see another day where these you would change out. Of course, these motors cost about half as much to produce as these, which is the real reason they switched to these. So now that I've bored you with the differences in the motor, there are going to be stinky cardboard in these because these were neglected. Um, and yeah, you can see they didn't, uh, they even changed the shape of the cardboard stamping on here. Everything else is the same. So if you didn't know by now, the answer to cleaning up old vacuums always is a central vacuum. I always like to clean out the carbons like this. All right. And you can see the cheap old manufacturer of the cardboard in the lid. I'm not sure that that would survive today. They still make a version similar to these, um, but again, I'm, I'm not, not too, too thrilled with them. I'm going to just pull apart uh, the rest of this. I'm surprised my, built, my drill has battery. I built a fence with it uh, over the weekend. off is to check uh, the bases and to clean everything up of course but I'll show you what I'm checking and on the switches there's gonna be this little guy you want to just throw him aside um, so this gasket around here will need to be replaced I'm also just checking the fans for cracks loose motor bearings and I always inspect with my finger the inside of these because that's not a good sign. Um, sometimes there's a hole that you can't see from the other side. So I always just like to check and make sure that that's good. And this one's good and we'll do the same. And you can see that the gaskets are just shot on these. All right, that all actually looks really, really good. It's really, really promising. Um, so that's probably about as far as we're gonna go on this part of the video. I'm gonna go wash everything and reassemble it. All right, per usual arrangement, I've got multiple machines apart. Uh, we're gonna set the, we're gonna put new gaskets on them. These rope gaskets are one-time use, you know, so as soon as you pop that motor apart, or the machine ages, I'd say, Um, like every other year in a dry climate, maybe once a year in a dry climate, you need to change these. Uh, anytime a machine starts spewing dust uh, more than normal, you know, these machines are not known for their filtration. And this one's got the Mexican motor. This is the better of the two. gaskets on there so now let's put everything back together and again I've got screws right here there is one screw that's shorter than the others and that goes in the back I always like to do him first 
And just like changing a tire on a car, you're gonna do the opposite corners if you can. And these are T20 to keep the average uh, janitor out of there. Not really sure how much that keeps people out these days because T20s are really widespread now, but that was the idea at least. There's also a little metal piece we're going to put back here. And that is that. And let's see, the light bulbs are shit. I have. LED in there. Now you're supposed to put these back, these covers, and we're going to see which one of these goes to the Mexican motor. This guy right here. Now I'm going to vacuum this out real quick. If you don't put the cardboard cover back, no big deal. Uh, nothing of value will be of will have been lost, but since I have it and it's in decent condition, I'm putting it, putting this one back uh, how it was. There we go. You got to make sure it's not sticking in the cooling fan or anything. Grab clamp. Put the gasket on. Bring her around. And it's twisted right there. That is how you do that. As you can see, this is the Chinese motor. Uh, this motor tends to give a lot more problems than we saw with the Mexican motor or the traditional American motor. Uh, it's probably been 40, 50 years since they used an American motor, though. Um, and the short screw goes in back, just like all the other sanitaires. And part of the problem is the resin compo component that they use on this. Uh, it doesn't hold up. The bearings are different. The motor spins faster, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, but not noticeably faster that you would be able to notice a power difference in terms of pickup. So we got all that stuck in there, and the wire goes in back on this one. And we are going to put in a uh, light bulb in there. So this top just goes back in place, like so. Um, and they do fit pretty loosely. I'm going to clean up whatever that is on the side. It's like somebody spilled paint. Just before I put that in and it's harder to do. Top just, you'll notice that the wheels can be hard to move or suck. A little bit of tri-flow will free those up. This rear wheel is really hard to turn for some reason. I suspect it was either bent, so I'm just going to loosen it and give it a, a tap from the other side. Now that's spinning easily. Give, give it some tri flow as well. Now both wheels spin freely. 
to explain what I'm doing over here. I've taken, you take each end cap off one by one. Um, and you just want to make sure they're clear of anything in there. These ones are actually good. Sometimes hair gets built in. They are eccentric. And we're over on the vise because we you, setting an end cap in the vise while we tighten this bolt up is absolutely necessary. Now, if you haven't lost your 10 millimeter, use a 10 millimeter. If you have a SAE set of wrenches, uh, I don't know what the matching SAE is, but yeah. All right. And you want to make sure it spins. That one spins. And again, this is a ball bearing one. Some of them are sleeve bearings, and you do need to lubricate them when you do that. These have to be intact. These are the, probably the most important part of this brush roller. Um, this vacuum was used, or the other vacuum, I don't, one of them was used wet. Uh, so these brush rollers are actually in good condition considering. Um, but and you can see that there are arrows on there. I'm gonna put those in there. All right, so that's a brush roller. Now before we do anything else there, I'm going to put our screws for our lid back in, which are Philip. May have had that torque too low. the springs in there. Um, grab that. Excellent. And there's a diagram right here that shows you how to do the belt. And the belt basically goes in the lower section there uh, as well. that. I'm going to get your T25 now. And I'm going to lift up and I'm also going to molest the wheel here. And we're going to put this style and app on there. Turn it up here, just click, and that's a T25. And now we can dial and app that. Now go into the back, which is kind of disgusting on this guy. I'm gonna clean him off. I didn't strip this one down and put it in the dishwasher. These were too nasty, uh, so I just kind of took them out back and power washed them. So that got some stuff cleaner than others. Uh, that play in the handle is normal, even if you put a new yoke on that. So just keep that in mind. These are pretty horrendous in terms of finish and fitment. Uh, by today's standards. It's definitely no Mila or SIBO. Uh, the bag, which is a quick disconnect on these commercials, goes in there. And this does leak from that. That's that's kind of the sad matter of that. And spring that up. Now something that will help mitigate some of the dust is I have a HEPA bag here. Uh, this is the aftermarket HEPA bag. I have tried to find these again on Amazon and I haven't been able to find them, so I think they might be out of production. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. If I find these HEPA bags, I'll put a link below. I'll also put a link below to like the brush roller and the belts and crap for these. Um, in case you need. Some of that stuff is getting harder to find. So that is, oops, got my gloves. All right, so this zipper is a little harsh. So the trick with the zipper, you never put a little bit of oil on a zipper that can make things glide much easier. So I'm gonna pull the Chinese version down off of this for a second. And we're just gonna focus on the last of the Mexicans. And I, I do have a tutorial on removing paint scuffs and stuff on Patreon. These guys, people often get these cord hooks mixed up um, right here. If you look, there's like a key. So you just want to put the cord on there, give it plenty of slack. 
And then once you the cord is on there, throw some blue lock ties so you can get it off if you need. Um, on these on these bolts, which are proprietary to the machine, you're not going to find these in, at your hardware store for whatever reason. Uh, they decided to use this very strange design. Um, again, a little bit of blue Loctite. I'll try to put a link below to that, so you, if you don't have that on your bench, super useful. Then you want to use a number five flathead. Don't bother with the Phillips on these. These need a lot more torque than a Phil most Phillips can handle, because uh, they put the Phillips is a, is a number two Phillips, which again you can't torque as much as you need uh, on this particular application. All right, I thought it would be interesting to hear the difference between the Mexican and the Chinese motor. So first, on the left, we have the Mexican. On the right, we have the Chinese. Some of the vibration on that is the brush roller. So that's the difference between Mexican and Chinese motors when you listen to them. So thanks folks for watching my uh, Eureka video. Uh, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Again, big thank you to our Patreon supporters. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, Patreon's where you can go donate a little bit of money, uh, which helps keep our channel going.